Hallelujah. 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 Let's get up on our feet this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we just come before you on this morning, oh God, thanking you for another day, God. Lord God, you didn't have to do it, but you saw fit to do it anyway, God. Lord God, you woke us up in our right minds this morning, Lord God. Lord God, you woke us up, Lord God, just to enjoy this day, Lord God, and to enjoy you, oh God. Father, I thank you right now just for all that you're doing in this house, oh God. Lord God, I thank you for what you're doing in my house, oh God. Lord God, I thank you for what you're doing in my lives and the lives of my sisters and brothers in Christ, oh God. Lord God, no matter what we're going through in our personal lives, oh God, just to allow us to see another day is a blessing in itself, oh God. Father, I ask that you have your way on this morning, oh God. Bless the man that's going to bring forth the word, Lord God. Let it be piercing to our souls, oh God. Lord God, let it make an impact in our life, oh God, that when we walk out here, we won't walk out the same way we came in, oh God. Lord God, I thank you on this morning just for being a good God. Lord God, just for carrying us when we're weak, Lord God. Standing in for us when we're strong, God. I thank you on this morning, Lord God. God, I thank you that I can lift my hand and give you praise, oh God. God, I'll praise you if I got to praise you by myself, oh God. Oh God, because you've been better to me than I've been to myself, oh God. And Lord, you love me when I couldn't even love myself, oh God. Lord God, when I couldn't even walk, you picked me up and you carried me, oh God. Lord God, when I felt weak, there were you strong for me, God. Oh God, when I didn't have a friend to turn to, you was my friend, God. When my mother wasn't doing right, Lord God, you was my mother, God. God, you was with my father in his absence, oh God. And Lord God, you've been everything that I need, oh God. And Lord God, I thank you right now, God, just for what you're doing, oh God. Lord God, I ask that you touch someone on this morning. Touch someone who needs a touch from you, oh God. Touch someone who's been crying out to you, oh God. Touch someone who's been calling on your name, oh God. Lord God, touch those that have lost loved ones, Lord God, in this last year, oh God. We've lost some mothers and some fathers, oh God, some sisters and some brothers, oh God. But I ask that you give them comfort, oh God. Lord God, that you give them comfort in their time of need, oh God. Lord God, bless them, God. Take them to another level in you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord God, everything we do, we cannot do it without you, Lord God. And whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me, God. Whatever you're doing in this season, God, don't do it out tomorrow, Lord God. Somebody need to put their name in their space and say, God, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me, Lord God. Hallelujah. God, whatever you're doing in this season, God, don't do it without me, Lord God. If you're going to another level, take me, Jesus. If you're taking us to another dimension, take me, Jesus. Lord God, don't do it without me, Lord God. Because for you I live and move and have my being, oh God. For you I live and for you I die, oh God. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. God, I love you on today, God. I love you, God. God. You are my everything, God. You are my everything, God. As long as I have you, God, I don't need nobody else, oh God. God, I thank you on this morning, Lord God, because you are worthy of my praise, God. And you desire my praise, God. You desire my worship and my praise, God. And I give it to you and you alone, God, because you have been God and God alone. And besides you, there is no other, God. I've searched high and I've looked low, and I can't find nobody quite like you, God. I can't find nobody quite like you, God. Lord God, anoint this choir on this morning, God. No more normal, God. No more tradition, God. God, another level in the name of Jesus. Another level in the name of Jesus. Another level in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. Another level, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, can give him praise, can give him glory. Thank him for who he is. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Lord. We thank you, God, that you are here right now. Yeah. Oh, how far? Creator, you hold our hearts together. There's no one higher than you. Redeemer, defender, our great and mighty Savior. There's no one higher than you. And you are always with us. You grace us to forgive us, and by your power we've been set free. And Lord, we stand amazed in your presence, astounded by your mercy and love. I have
Because our God is so good in all his ways. There's no one like him. There's no God like our God. He is holy in all his ways. And we declare this morning that you're all that we need. There's no God like our God.
everything that you need. He's powerful. He passes all understanding. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that we honor. We adore him. We lift him high. Yeah. No God like our God. And guess what? He's here. And anything you stand in need of, you can receive it in the name of Jesus. Do you believe that this morning? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. God is an awesome God, and we praise him for who he is. There's nobody like him. It's offering time. Are you ready to give this morning a national praise? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's prepare ourselves and give our tithes and our offering this morning as we prepare to do our offering confession. As we give today in our offerings, we believe in the Lord for jobs, to better jobs, benefits, raises, and bonuses, sales, and commission, settlements of the states and inheritance, rebates and returns, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, that tomorrow, rich inventions, and entrepreneurial spirit for the advancement of the kingdom and blessings for our family. It's offering time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This year, join 445,000 of your peers and learn how to maximize your influence with two days of leadership training from our world-class faculty. Featuring Simon Sinek, Angela Ahrens, Strive Masiwa, Danny Meyer, Rory Vaden, Sheila Heen, Rasmus Ankerson, Erwin McManus, David Livermore, Dr. Ntabiseng Le Huete, Craig Groeschel, T.D. Jakes, John Maxwell, and Carla Harris. Influence is a powerful thing. Leadership is influence, and everyone has influence. The question is, how are you stewarding yours? Hello, International Praise family. The Hispanic Men's Conference is Saturday, July the 28th. Cost is $25, which includes breakfast and lunch. Register online or in the Connect Center. Baptism will be next Sunday, July the 15th, after second service. Baptism class will be held on Wednesday, July the 11th. Sign up online or in the Connect Center. There will be a Youth and Kids Revival meeting on Thursday, July the 19th. Please see Pastor Donna or Pastor Chris for more information. Dynamic marriage information meetings will be held on Wednesday, July the 18th and 25th, August the 8th and 15th. Our East Columbia District Rally will be Sunday, July the 22nd at Cornerstone Church of God in Winsboro. Meet us there to praise and worship our God together as one church body with our local area Church of God. Don't forget to pick up your capital campaign dinners today after worship. Ministry meeting will be today at 3 p.m. in the Cafe Commons area. The new quarter for classes have already begun. Sign up for Christian education and get connected classes today in the Connect Center or online. Get connected and get involved by volunteering in a ministry or becoming a part of a life group. Join us for Word and Prayer on Saturdays at 8 a.m. And remember to love God love others, and reach the world.
Way, Father, come like a mighty rushing wind in this place. Stir up the spirit within us, God. Set us on fire one more time. Let your name be glorified in this place. Be magnified, Heavenly Father, because you are great, God, and we honor you. We praise you for who you are. So we one more time be sure. Gotta believe it again. Sure in our love. So we Give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. We declare this morning.
Bible says in Psalms 150, amen, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Why don't you just lift your voices toward heaven? You've got breath in your body. 
why don't you just give him some praise right now in your own way this morning i don't i don't know what you have need of this morning but i can tell you this he is the answer amen would you say that with me just say put your finger toward heaven and say you are the answer or, or you can make it more personal. You are my answer. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Come on, let's sing. Great, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. your supreme authority right now father we submit to you as our supreme authority god you know everything that's going on in our lives right now and so lord today we submit to you and we say to you god you are my god you're my lord you're my refuge and you're my strength so god wherever and whatever needs this congregation has this morning we know the church is not the answer. We know that you are the answer to the church. So God, we pray this morning that God, that you'll meet the need of every person here this morning, regardless of where they are, regardless if it's physical, we know that you are God who can create the physical. And so God, we know that you can fix it as well. God, if there's people here this morning that need reconciliation, we know that God, that you're the God who reconciles. So, God, I don't know the need of every person here this morning, but you know every desire. You know every heart. You know every need. So, God, I pray that, God, that you'd meet every person right where they are right now in the name of Jesus. Let them feel and experience the Shekinah glory, the presence of the Almighty God moving up and down the windows of their soul in the name of Jesus. Minister to us right where we are. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone, give God praise one more time, if you don't mind, in the house of the Lord. Let him know that you love him this morning and you appreciate him this morning as being your supreme authority. Amen. Let me welcome our guests with us this morning, all the way from Panama. Amen. One of Sister Clarissa's um, close friends, if you will. She's her confidant. She's her friend. Amen. Uh, crime in, in, in uh, whatever you want to call it. Amen. But anyway, good to have with us this morning, Elvia Gonzalez. Elvia, would you raise your hand in the back? Great. Go ahead and stand up. That's right, Elvia. Good to have Elvia with us this morning. She'll be here for two weeks, so please make her feel welcome. Also, uh, Michelle Mimi Whipper. Where's Michelle Mimi Whipper? Where's Michelle? Good to have Michelle with us this morning. Give her a good international praise. Welcome. Also, good to have with us this morning, Gail Reed. Where's Gail? Gail Reed. Amen. Good to have Gail with us this morning. Amen. And also good to have JC with us this morning, the first time in the house of the Lord with us this morning. Little baby JC. Congratulations, uh, Jacob and Alicia. John, amen, on um, their beautiful daughter, JC. Amen. So make JC feel welcome. Listen, I'm going to ask if brother and sister Reed would come up for a moment. You can be seated just for a moment and we're going to get right into the word. But brother and sister Reed, unfortunately, were caught up in the, um, is it called VC Summers? Is that what it's called? Um, nuclear power plant shutdown, if you will. And um, brother Reed served and sister Reed served as elders um, at the church. And um, unfortunately, they are having to transition to another state because of employment. Couldn't find anything in South Carolina. Wanted to stay in South Carolina, but God had other plans. Amen. We just believe that the steps of a righteous man and woman are ordered by God. And uh, we want to say to you guys, thank you for being faithful. Amen. And thank you for being um, leaders. 
and thank you for submitting to leadership and also overseeing a group of around 35 families, amen, while they were here. And so uh, coming at this time, what we'd like to do is we'd like to present uh, Sister Reed with a beautiful bouquet of flowers, amen, to say thank you for, for serving as an elder's wife. And also, we want, also want to present you guys with a card and also a monetary gift just to say thank you for uh, serving as leaders. Amen. Um, please express, uh, I mean, accept this token of appreciation and love on behalf of the church for your faithfulness in serving international praise. Amen. Would y'all let the reeds know we love them and we appreciate them. Amen. And would you, um, you know, sometimes, guys, and one of our members came to me, and he talked to me. He said, Pastor, he said, you know, we do a great job on recognizing people when they come in. Um, but we don't do a lot on recognizing people when they go out. And obviously, we're not going to recognize everybody that comes and goes. We just don't have time to do that. Amen. But when somebody serves in a position of leadership and they serve faithfully, and they leave on good terms, key thing, leave on good terms, amen. Um, we'll be more, I, I think it's a good thing. And so Desiree Rooms is a guy, who, he served on your el elder list, if you will, and uh, he asked if he could help lead that up, and I said, sure. I said, I think that's what we should do. Amen, but would you stretch your hands this way, and would you ask God to touch them as they move to their next destination? Have you found a church already? You waiting for her to get there? All right. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for the reeds, and I thank you for their leadership while they were here in the Columbia area. And God, who knows, maybe one day they'll come back, and I pray that they'll feel like they can just come back home to international praise. But God, in this season, God, you're moving them, and God, we understand that. They're your choice servants, and we just believe, God, that you've got a place for them, and you're preparing, God, for them to be used in another venue. And so, God, we pray that, God, wherever that is and whoever that is, I pray that they would accept these eagles with, with glad hearts. So, God, thank you for every word that they've sown, every moment, every time, every meeting that they've been, been involved in to help take international praise to a new level. So, God, I pray blessings upon them in every area of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. One more time, would you let the reeds know we appreciate them this morning. Amen. Everyone should have received a letter in the mail this past week if you did not receive a letter in the mail. Did everyone receive one? If you received it, raise your hand. If you didn't, it's either because you're new or you're not in our system yet. And so that's a good indicator that um, we need to get some information on you so that we can mail out information. But I sent out a, a letter to everyone in the congregation. This is everyone who's on an elder list. Amen. So if you didn't get it, let us know because we may not have your correct address or you may not be assigned an elder yet. Um, but anyway, I told you about different things that have been uh, achieved and our goals. Um, but also, I gave you four things that I ask, if you will, just to continue to give, amen, your tithe and your offerings, amen. Your tithe, amen, helps always take care of the facilities that we have, but also to enhance them, amen, surplus, surplus tithe, but also the capital campaign. And you see on your envelope that says capital campaign, what that helps us do is pay off indebtedness, but this is... And I've not presented this to the elders yet, but as of right now, I'm going to ask the elders uh, next, I think it's next on the 16th, that we just stop um, taking all of the capital campaign money and paying off indebtedness because we've got some, some projects that we want to get done. One of them is to remodel the um, IP Cafe and also remodel the, um, the Christian Education Wing. We want to remodel that, bring it up to date, Make it youth and kid friendly, if you will. IP Cafe, make it more um, like a cafe. But also we want to begin to go ahead and prepare the slab, if you will, in faith, amen, for the next phase sanctuary, amen. Amen. 
And, um, and so in the meantime, until we get ready to build, then we uh, will be able to use it for outdoor activities. But also we want to build an amphitheater that will be overlooking the pond, start cleaning that up over on the side, if you will. Uh, it will be used, obviously, for outdoor events, but also would be a beautiful backdrop, if you will, or scenery for a outdoor weddings and things like that. All right? So um, just know that your money is being spent wisely. Your tithe dollar is being spent wisely. And so when you give, you help us um, advance the kingdom, but also the vision that God has for international praise. So, so um, I'll send these out periodically just to kind of give you updates of knowing where we're going. I'm also working on a five-year plan as we're speaking as well. All right? Um, theme scripture for this series this morning. I only got to part um, point one last week on um, the subject of being under authority. And let me remind you, this is um, a hard, um, but um, what's the word, discipled or disciplined word um, that the body needs. And so sometimes when we receive a hard, disciplined or dis a discipleship word, it's not always something that we shout about. But if you apply the principle to your life, I assure you that it will bring a shout to your life because you'll have protection and provision for your life. Psalms 91, beginning in verse 1, it says this. <clears throat> Just two verses of Scripture. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, whom I trust. Amen. Father in heaven, I thank you for the word. And I ask you to help me as I endeavor to break the bread of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Look to your neighbor and ask him, are you under authority? Last week, we started a new series entitled Under Authority, and I only got to point one, and so for the, the sake of those that were not here last week and also for the continuity of the message, what I'd like to do is kind of briefly go through point one. Obviously, if it took me an entire, um, entire service last week to go through point one, I can't hit everything, so... For those of you who missed part one, you can watch it online. So this is my prayer. My prayer is that every believer, every Christian, every person who professes themselves to be a follower of, of Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, that we would remind ourselves of the seriousness of coming under God's sovereign authority, being submissive to God as being the supreme authority of all the universe, of the entire world. So when I asked the question last week, I asked, is there anyone here that would not want to be under the protection and the provision of God? And I, I said that, that I don't believe there's one person here that would say, I do not want God's protection or provision in my life. Every one of us wants God's protection and God's provision. But if that's the case, then why is it that there are so many people that resist God's supreme authority and also God's delegated authority? Why is it that when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to the Word of God, that we will say, I'll do what it says as long as it justifies my lifestyle. Is God's word the supreme authority of your life or is it not the supreme authority of your life? The moment that we begin to bring God's word down to our level, not that you can because you can't. You can justify it in your mind that you have. You, you have come out from the covering 
of God's supernatural authority because you made up in your mind that you are going to do something different than what God's word says. And, and so it's very clear that when, when I make God my supreme authority, that there is provision and there is protection in, my life, in our life. So we live in a day and age where people do not want to be subject to anything, much less to someone. But David writes in Psalms 91, verse 1 and 2, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And as I was reading it again this morning, you know, you, you can read a scripture one week and you can read it the next and there'll be something else that will just leap off the pages to you, but... One of the things that I recognized again this morning is how personal David is in regards to when he writes. He says, he's, when he goes on and says to God, he says, he is my refuge. But he also says and that he is his fortress and in him will I trust. A question for us this morning is do we trust God as being our supreme authority? Is God the measure of our life? Or have we allowed something else or someone else or the culture of our day to shape us into what we accept as being the right authority? As this as being the line of measure that I am to shoot for. But the Bible is very clear that it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So when we make the decision that we are not going to follow the will and the mandate or, or what God declares as being righteous and holy in our life, we make a decision to come out from underneath the shadow of the Most High God. You see, to put it briefly, the one that is under God's authority is the one that, who, that is protected. So what if you're not living in such a way that would clearly depict the life that is submissive to God's ultimate authority? You see, Adam and Eve, they enjoyed the freedom and the protection in the garden under God's authority as long as they did what God told them to do. But as soon as they decided that they wanted to disobey or they disobeyed, they found themselves in a great um, they found themselves in a place where they were no longer underneath the shadow of the wings. They found themselves in need of protection from, from God. It, it was the need to cover themselves again. Romans 3 and 23 says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So all of us are in need of the glory. And the good news is that when we accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior and we follow the ways of God, that God's glory can rest upon us again. But they were in need of protection. Their disobedience to God's authority robbed mankind of the sweet freedom and the protection that they once knew. Authority is not, in our society, is not a popular word. Yet by rejecting or fearing it, we lose sight of the protection and benefits that it provides. And we often, we, listen, we have, what we have to do is we have to train ourselves to see authority from God's perspective, not from man's perspective. In our society, in our society today, our, our society is telling us we don't have to submit to authority. The question that we must ask ourselves is, do we believe in God as being the ultimate authority? So my first point was that God is the ultimate authority, that he is the beginning and the end, that he is the alpha and the omega, he's the omnipotent, he's the all-powerful God, and that nothing happens without his knowing. The Bible tells us that Isaiah records in Isaiah 45 and verse 18, for thus says the Lord who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it in, uh, to be inhabited, I am the Lord and there is no other. My question for you is, is he the supreme God? Or is there another way. I mean, can you get there? Can you get to heaven another way? Can, can you work your way into heaven? I, I mean, can, 
you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, is there another way that you get you can get to God? Is G, or is Jesus the only way? You know, in our society today, it tells us that, you know what, there's got to be many more ways to God because there's good people in other religions, and I don't argue the fact, that fact. But in reality, listen, we know that there's only one way to God. But our society is trying to get us to change our theology and, the, and our doctrines and the way that we believe as God being the supernatural God and the supreme authority. It, that there was only one of the Father that he sent that, that was offered on the cross of Calvary for our sins and was buried in the tomb. And on the third day, he, he arose from the grave. Here's only one that's paid the ultimate sacrifice. But you see what I'm trying to say? The world is trying to tell us there's many other ways that we can get there. And so what they're trying to do and what the enemy is trying to do is he's trying to deceive us to taking away the supreme authority of God and the way God has reconciled man unto himself. Listen, some people do, would just say, I just don't believe in authority any longer. Some just say, I'm just not going to submit to authority unless I first agree with it. But let me ask you a question. Is that what the Bible says? Does the Bible say you're supposed to believe like that? The Word of God holds specific answers to all the questions. We all know that Lucifer fell because he rebelled against God. We know that Adam and Eve failed because, listen, he rebelled, they rebelled against God. And we also know that we all failed as well because we rebelled against God. So, listen, my prayer for us is that when we are confronted with the truth, when, when we are confronted with the Word of God, when a, a man of God or a woman of God or a prophet of God speaks the truth to us in love, how are we going to handle what they speak? My, my prayer is, is that we will be like David, that we will repent and that we will reject pride that keeps us from God's provision and protection. So when the prophet or when the man of God or when some woman of God, someone's preaching the word of God and we fall convicted under the word of God, under the supreme authority of the word of God, what we need to do is we need to bow our heads and bow our knees and say to God, God, I, I'm sorry, but I have come from underneath your covering or your authority and your protection because I've tried to justify my means of living. Just this past week, I was talking to a pastor friend of mine, and he showed me this long write-up, if you will, of his of his um, of, of what he had recorded as a, a meeting with an individual, and and that, this this is not confidential; it's it's generic, if you will, in 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 scope of things. But the individual, Amen came to the church, went through all the different procedures of becoming a member, goes through the doctrines and of what we believe and all those different things. And all of a sudden, the, the individual gets mad at the leader, gets mad at the pastor, and he says, why do you have to keep preaching about sin? <laughs> and what the individual didn't realize is he was under conviction. I mean, he is preaching about things and, and what the Bible says as being our supreme authority and on, on the way that we're supposed to live. And, you know, instead of being subject to the authority of the word and God's delegated authority, the individual decides to leave the church. And so what he did was he willfully said, I will reject your teaching, regardless if it lines up with the word of God or not. I will reject your teaching. And, and, and so his theology or his doctrine was, as long as I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, I can live my life any way I want to live, and I'll still make it to heaven. Well, show me that in the Bible. The Bible says you shall know them by the fruit that they bear. Amen. Listen, don't get me wrong. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but by his mercy he has saved us. But you know what? Your heart changes at, when you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You, you have a desire not to go back to live the same way that you've been living. And so, therefore, that doctrine, what happened is the set. The set I'm, I'm talking to the other pastor, and I'm saying, you know what? I'm sad. I'm sad for the individual, and I'm sad for his descendants because more than likely his descendants 
are going to follow in the same path. And he says, too late, pastor. He said his son is already doing things that he's not supposed to be doing. And so his same theology is, I can go and do whatever I want to do, and I can still make it in heaven. And so sometimes we wonder why our, our families and our descendants, if you will, are in such an, such an array. It's because our theology is not right. We don't have God as being our supreme authority, and we don't have God as being our line of measure and so we try to bring God down to where we are to justify the means by which we live instead of trying to come up to him and so we wonder why things are going so, so array in our lives hello I remind, reminds me if you will oh help me Lord I'm not going to share that amen but we live in the midst of a world that increases daily lawlessness have you ever seen such lawlessness in your life? I mean, no regard for authority. I, I mean, from, from pastors to police officers to people of government to school teachers to, it doesn't matter. We don't, we don't, even, we don't respect each other, much less respect authority. And Christians aren't supposed to be that way. You see, this is, this is the tactic of Satan. The enemy of our soul. He lures us into bondage by making evil appear desirable and good and portrays what is liberating and holy as bondage. And, and you know, sometimes you'll have the evidence. You'll have the scripture. You'll have the proof. And some people will just say, you know what? I don't care what you say. I remember years ago I was preaching a revival in La France, South Carolina. On, my, on Sunday, man, we had a mighty move of God. Sunday morning, Sunday night, we had a mighty move of God. There was an individual that hadn't been saved all his life. He was, I can't remember, he's probably in his 30s or 40s, and he walked the aisle. He gave his life to the Lord. Sunday night, we had a service. Uh, it was powerful, if you will. Many people were coming to the altar. People were being saved, filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. But on Monday, it's like when I came in, it's like I was hitting a wall. And Monday night after service, I said, Pastor, what happened? And he said, one lady told people in the congregation that you told her daughter-in-law she was not saved. And I said, Pastor, I would never tell anybody that told me they were saved that they were not saved. And, I, and, and you know, the good thing is, is when, as an evangelist, I would work the altar, I'd always keep the microphone to my mouth. And so I said, pull the tape. And so he pulled the tape, and he played it, and he heard it. And I was proven to be right in this manner. He looked at the lady. He says, he took the tape, and he says, I want you to listen to this tape. She looked at the pastor and says, I don't care what the tape says. You see what I'm talking about? So sometimes what happens is we can say, you know what, I don't care what the truth is. You know what, I'm, I'm going to justify my actions. And so she hindered the entire rest of the revival. Can you imagine one day if she doesn't get that right and get it under the blood of Jesus that she'll stand before the supreme authority, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and she'll be accountable for working against the kingdom. Now, I know sometimes we don't like to think of it that way. But in reality, everything we say, everything we do, amen, it's being written. It's been, but when it's, when, listen, if it's wrong and you put it under the blood, guess what? It comes out of the book and it's thrown into the sea of forgetfulness, never to be brought up again unless you go back and commit it again. That's why repentance is vitally important. So this is a tactic of the enemy. Remember in the garden, his method works so well. He hasn't changed it since, and, and he's still doing the same thing now. This is why the Bible says in James 1 and 16, he says, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. He also goes in Romans 12 and verse 2, and it says, do not be conformed to this world, but what? Be what? Transformed by what? The renewing of your mind that you may what? Prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, if you listen to the world, the world will justify your convictions. But if you listen to the Bible, 
the Bible will tell you the measure. And, and don't get me wrong, none of us are perfect. But, but, but listen, what we've got to settle in our mind is that the Word of God is our supreme authority. And this is what I attempt to measure up to. Not to what the world says. Not to what society says. Not even what my wife says or my husband says or what my mom and dad says. My, my ultimate authority, the supreme authority, is God himself. Which, which brings me to my second point. God's kingdom is not a democracy. It is a theocracy. It's, it's hard to understand kingdom principles with a democratic mindset. Democracy is fine for nations of the world, but we must remember the kingdom of God is just that. It's a kingdom. It's not a democracy. It's ruled by a king, and within kingdoms are rank, order, and authority. The laws of his kingdoms are not superseded by or subject to popular opinion with, uh, by voting or polls. The laws are not swayed by what we believe to be good for us as Eve was so cleverly deceived by Satan herself into her own mindset. Therefore, just as Samuel explained to the people the behavior of royalty and wrote, in it, wrote it in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 25, we must also be instructed on kingdom principles. So we try to live a Christian life under a democratic mindset instead of a theocracy. And so we don't live under the king. We live under the rule of government. And, and, and so we don't live under what thus saith the Lord. We rule under, we live under what thus saith the people. And so you can find an entire congregation going to hell in a handbasket because they live by thus saith the people rather than thus saith the Lord. Don't, if you don't believe me, you get on the internet or you go visit some churches. There's some people out there and there's some churches out there that can soothe the crave of your sin. Are you with me? Oh, help me in this place. Y'all quiet in this place. Hello? But not in this house. Hello? He, here's, here's where the problem lies. We attempt to live as believers with a cultural mindset towards authority, of which positions us for danger. Too often today, if we don't agree with authority, we can challenge it through complaint and protest. After all, government should be of the people, by the people, and for the people. Isn't that what we're taught? Uh, this and other democratic mindsets have trickled into our Christianity and marched many down the deceptive path of self-rule. In other words, we don't need you, God. We've got this under control. You know what? We're going to have religion. I'm going to soothe my conscience. I'm going to feel good because I went to church on Sunday, but my doctrine doesn't measure up to your sovereign authority. You with me? Are, are you guys understanding what I'm saying this morning? I know you are. But, but what I'm trying to say is we've got to say, what does the Bible say? As this path continues, they, they go beyond challenge authority to blatantly resisting authority. Then there are those who have developed a greater degree of contempt for authority, which they display by totally ignoring its existence, of which leads into another realm, what happens happens is eventually when they, when they have disdain for earthly authority, guess what happens? They begin to betray and, and have a complete disdain for godly authority. And so what happens is we lose our fear of God. But the Bible says that the beginning of wisdom is what? The fear of God. I don't fear the one who can destroy the body. I fear the one who can destroy the body and soul. I have a holy all of God. It, the all I'm talking about is a godly fear. It's not the type of fear that weighs me down and keeps me from worship or keeps me from serving him or getting out of my bed. No, it's a fear that gets me up in the morning. It's a fear that says, you know what? I want to live a certain way. It's a, a fear that says, I have an awe and a respect of the God who is the creator and the sustainer of all the universe. That's what I'm talking about. And so when we lose the fear of God, we've lost our wisdom. Hello? 
But none of these approaches will bring the very freedom we seek. For Scripture says in Job 36, verse 11 and 12, it says this, If they obey and serve him, it says they will spend the rest of their lives or their days in prosperity and their years in contentment. But conditional clause. If they do not listen, they will perish by the sword and die without knowledge. So, so it's conditional. We, you know, we say, if we obey, you, you can t I guarantee you, you can take believers, and I said this last week, you can look on their countenance, you can tell they've got peace, doesn't mean they don't go through trouble, doesn't mean they don't go through tribulation, but you can take people who are followers of the Most High God, and I can tell you, they may not be the wealthiest ones in the basket, and they may be, they may be rich beyond measure, but in reality, when you look in their heart, they've got peace, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. They've got prosperity, and they also have contentment where they are. Why? Because they understand this life is but just a favor. I'm just a pilgrim and I'm passing through. I'm on a journey toward heaven. I'm going to ask you something. I said it in a series prior to this. Is our focus on heaven or is our focus here on earth? If our focus is on heaven, then he'll be our supreme authority. If, he's, if our focus is not on heaven, then guess what? We'll live differently. We'll live like people on the earth. But if we live, listen, if our focus is on making it into heaven, we'll live differently on the earth. We won't just be like the people, act like the people, talk like the people. No, we'll walk like God, talk like God, and act like God. And when we fail, we'll be like David. We'll get on our knees and we'll say, God, I failed you again, but I want to be in right standing with you because you are my supreme authority. Somebody give God praise in this place. This is what we have to understand. The hymn that Job 36 and 11 and 12 is talking about is none other than God. But here's what I would for us to notice. There is provision and protection in exchange for our submission to his authority. However, we must also note as well that there is impending danger for those that ignore God's authority. And so listen, I, I read it this morning. It was in my email. One of the rabbis Sent, a, sent out a thing talking about the Sabbath, that when we celebrate the Sabbath, some people say this is just a control mechanism of the church. It's not. It is a principle of worship. When we say, you know what, I'm going to celebrate the Sabbath and I'm going to keep the Sabbath and I'm going to keep it holy, what we're saying is, God, you are in control of all the universe. So whether I work or don't, listen, when, when, I, when I make a decision not to work on the Sabbath, I trust you in my provision. And so some people say, you know what? I, I, I've got to work. I've got to, I got to make the money. I've got to make ends meet. I've got to work three jobs just to make ends meet. You might want to just try well, keeping the Sabbath day and keeping it holy. And maybe God can shut down some of those places and give you a, a raise in your life so that you'll be able to uh, keep, keep uh, him as being the supreme being over your life. Come on, somebody. Give him praise if you don't mind. I, I'm telling you, it works. The prince, the, you know, we have to decide whether this is the truth or not. If there are blessings associated with what his word says, then why, not we, why don't we just test them and try him and see if, 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 if he will not do what his word says he will do. And, and so but we, 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 we miss out, if you will, on submitting to his supreme authority and we miss out on the blessings of what God has in store for us. And we miss out on that peace and that, that contentment, if you will. Hello? You see, the freedom we seek when resisting authority is lost when we move in rebellion of God's authority. Here's a thought that most people would not agree with this morning in our society today. There is freedom in submission and there is bondage in rebellion. There's freedom in submission and there's bondage in rebellion. Some people say, I submit to God, but not to man unless I agree with him. This is where our upbringing and, uh, and incorrect church thinking can hinder us. We, we cannot separate our submission to God's inherent authority from our submission to his delegated authority 
all authority originates from him. Now, just for sake of preventive measure, if you will, let me just say for our guests this morning, international praise does not generally have a lot of problems with people not submitting to the authority. Are you with me? We just don't. We've got a good church for the most part. But I'd be lying to you to say if every now and then we don't have people who don't want to submit to authority. And so the systems or the things are set in place to protect the body. My, my pastor was here this morning, and I, and, I, and I asked him, I said, Pastor, did I give you any trouble? He, and, and I said, raise your hand if I did. And he went like that. You, you know what I'm saying? But he'll, he'll tell you, I, 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 was, I, I don't have a problem in submitting to authority. I didn't have a problem in the military. I don't have a problem in ministry. I didn't have a problem with my mom and dad. My mom and dad were here this morning. They'd tell you I was a good kid for the most part. I wasn't perfect, but I was a good kid. I, I, didn't, I didn't give them the hell that my other brothers did. And, and I can tell you, I can look at my life. And I can look at some of their lives, and I can tell you, I believe that's one of the reasons why I'm blessed, because I learned the principle of being submissive to authority. The Bible says, honor your mother and father so that your days upon the earth shall be what? Long. Hello? He didn't say honor them if they're right. Hello? I got off on a tangent somewhere. Hello? So, so, so where, where was I? Somebody help me out if you don't mind. I was going somewhere. So all, all authority originates from him. And, and so what happens is sometimes is we spiritualize it. And we say, you know, I know you've got your order in the church, but God told me. You better make sure God told you. And I'm going to tell you something. God will never go against his word. Hello? Hello? I'm going to say it again. God will never go against his word. Hello? And, and, and so if it contradicts God's word and, and God's got authority and systems in place, some, sometimes it's, it's this way, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I feel like this is a place I need to, need to put it, if you will. So, sometimes what happens is, you know, we've been a part of other ministries, and other ministries did it this way, and, but in reality it wasn't. It wasn't biblical. And so we, we justify, well, this is the way we, we did it at the other church. Well, you're not at the other church. If you're at the other church, go back and you can do it that way. But, but so you've got to understand there's an authority. And it's, it's sort of like this. It's sort of like me coming to your house and saying, you know what? I'm going to cross your threshold. Though you eat in the dining room, I'm going to eat in the living room. You, you know what I'm talking about? The threshold covenant says this, basically. When you come into my house, you submit to my rules. And when I come into, listen, as long as my rules, amen, are subject to the supreme authority of God. But listen, I don't go against your rules. What that means is I have my own rules based upon the word of God. Therefore, when I come across your threshold, if your standards are down here, it doesn't mean that I bring my and my standards up or up here, it doesn't mean that I bring my standards from up here down to here. Are you with me? You may, you may not have convictions about what I have convictions about just by the sake of spiritual maturity. And I'm not looking down my long spiritual noses at anyone. I'm not there to convict you. I'm there to live by my, my own convictions based upon the word of God. But, but therefore, if I don't do certain things, they're my convictions, and therefore I'm not going to come down here because you like to do them. In my mind, I'm not going to do those. And, and I base that upon the word of God but if I come into your house and you say we don't do these things or I'm sorry you come into my house and you and I say we don't do these things in my house guess what and you're here and we are here for the sake of understanding the word of God it's not that you listen what, what you have to make up in your mind I'm not going to disrespect the authority of this house so sometimes what happens is God's got us aligned with 
people who are trying to help shape us and help us come to a, a higher level in our threshold and our covenant with God. And so sometimes when he has people in front of us, we say, you know what, I'm just comfortable right here. And God said, no, I'm trying to get you up here. That's why I'm exposing you. But you should never come down. You should always try to bring people up. I, I don't know why I need to say this, but somebody's putting a demand on the anointing, if you will. It's like you're one way in the church, your standard's here, but when you go across another threshold and they're down here, you come from up here and you go down here. And the next thing you know, you've got conviction on your life. You know why? Because you came from out from underneath the covering of the supernatural, all supreme God. Hello, help me in this place. I know it's not popular, but it's the truth. So my point three, and I'm going to bring it in for a landing. Lord have mercy. Where did the time go? Romans 13, verse 1 and 2. two and, and, and listen, all authority originates from God. He says, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Ju they will bring judgment on themselves. You, you know, when we were... Um, at camp meeting and Perry Stone preached about um, judge not for in the same manner you, ju you judge um, you will be judged and Perry Stone was talking about you know people talking about you know state overseers and talking about pastors and, and other people in, in the positions of authority and he says when you shoot those arrows out those arrows turn right back around and come back to you and your hedge of protection that's around you if you will your hedge gets torn down because the same measure you judge them is the same measure you're going to be judged and you know and, and the next day you go out to lunch with a bunch of leaders guess what they don't have nothing to talk about You talking about shutting up gossip real quick? <laughs> when you get a clear picture of what authority is, it, uh, the, the supreme authority, hello? So God appoints the 16 rulers. The truth is, and listen, is there anybody here that's not guilty of this? Every one of us are guilty. But I think when we learn the principle, it's just like anything else. We have to say, you know what, I'm not going to be a participant in this. Hello? Because... I don't want to bring judgment on myself. So the truth is, no one can get into a place of legitimate authority without God's knowledge. We must settle this in our minds and in our hearts. The reason it is difficult for many to accept this truth is because they've experienced mean, cruel, harsh, and dishonest authorities. However, we must again examine the above words. We are told all authority is of God. We are not told all authority is godly. Did you get that? All authorities are of God, but he didn't say that all authorities are are godly. I think about Saul. When Saul started out his, his, as being first king of Israel, he, he was probably a good guy. He's probably trying to do it right. He prophesied. He's, you know, he, he gave a word, if you will. But as time went on, he said, you know what? God, I got this. And so sometimes, guys, this is what happened. We start off good, but we don't end good. We don't stay submissive to God's supreme authority. We, we see the, the good, the bad, and the ugly of the church. And, and, we, and, and you know what? And we realize leadership is not perfect. And we say, well, if, if he ain't perfect, if she ain't perfect, if they're, they're not perfect, then we don't have to submit. Well, guess what? You've got disorder. You've got mayhem. You've got chaos. That's, that's the mess we're in in our country right now. And God help us not to allow it to infiltrate in the church. But there's churches that are in a mess. You know why? Because they won't submit to authority. We've got homes in a mess because they won't, a wife won't submit to a husband. A husband won't submit to God. And the children won't submit to the parents. And we wonder why all this stuff is going on in our lives. It's because we made a willful decision to come out from underneath the supreme authority of the king of kings 
and the Lord of Lords. So to rebel against those authorities is to rebel against the ordinances of the Lord or God himself and those who do bring judgment on themselves. So we must remember our father, not a power-hungry leader, is the one who authored these scriptures. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3 and 16, it tells us that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Although we may not be quick to admit it, too many see themselves only accountable to God and not authorities. And so once again, this is what happens. Well, I don't have to submit to you because God told me to do this. You're out of order. Because God will not surpass the authority in the order that is established. God will deal with the authority. Did you, did you hear what I said? And, and so we spiritualize it. It's, it's like the guy, if you will, that spoke in tongues at, church, at the church and he gave the interpretation and said, remove him. Well, God had a state overseer, a youth director, a church ministry's director, and probably somebody from the executive council, council on the platform. It's their responsibility to police this pulpit because they were, he was in their house. He's submissive unto their authority. Are you with me? And so they will stand accountable Amen, for the person who stands behind this sacred pulpit. Are you with me? It's sort of like Juanita Bynum, and I don't know, a lot, I don't know her personal story, if you will, but Juanita Bynum tells a, t a story. She said, you know, you, sometimes we have a gifting. You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we, God's gifted us to be able to sing and be able to play, and sometimes in that gifting, you know what to do. It's in order to move the people. Are you with me? But there's a difference between the gifting and the anointing. Did you hear what I said? There's a difference between the gifting and the anointing. It's the, the, listen, it's the anointing that makes the difference. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage. So you can get there with your gifting. And so one day she's up there and she's singing in her church and her pastor realized she wasn't under the anointing, but she was under her gifting. And so the pastor said, Juanita, sit down in front of the entire church. Sit down. You know what she could have done? Got mad, went down the, the road, went to another church, and guess what? She would have been able to sing somewhere else. But I can guarantee you this, she wouldn't be where she is today. You know why? Because she said that herself, there's no doubt in my mind, if I would not have subjected myself to the teachings of my pastor when I was operating in my gifting and instead of the anointing, because if I cannot subject myself to the man, how in the world am I going to subject myself to God? Are you with me? And so Juanita Bynum is where she is, no doubt, because she learned how to submit to authority. But sometimes, you know what, we say, you know what, I, I don't care what the pastor says. I don't care what the other leader says. And so I'm going to do what I want to do because God said. It's, this, is a, this is a good thing, so it's got to be God. It's, listen, just because it's good doesn't mean it, God's telling you to do it. Oh, Jesus, help me in this place. <laughs> and so we spiritualize it, and we try to justify our means. And I'm closing. I'm asking if you will stand with me all over the house. The Apostle Paul is on the road to Damascus, and he thinks he's doing God a favor. These Christians, they're not God's chosen people. And so he gets a decree, and he's able to go and get Christians, and he's able to um, arrest them and persecute them. Till one day he is, um, he has an encounter. And Jesus speaks to him, and he says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And his word says this. He, through his own volition, through his own mouth, he says, who art thou, Lord? So now he's getting a clear picture of the sovereignty of God. This wasn't another man. It wasn't another woman. He's having a supernatural encounter with God. So he, he says, who are thou, Lord? And he said, Jesus says, it is I whom thou, uh, basically, you kick against. And he said, it, it's hard for you to kick against the, the goads or the, the pricks, if you will. You know what a goad is? A goad is a long stick with a point on the end. And with a, 
It looks like that right there. And farmers would use them to take oxen. They'd put the yoke over the, the oxen, if you will, in, in order to plow the field and prepare it for, an, for a harvest. And, and, and what you do is when they didn't want to move, the farmer would take and poke the oxen on the backside. And after a while, the oxen said, you know what? This pain that I'm getting on the backside will far supersede the pain of plowing this field. And that oxen would begin, you know what, to begin to plow the field. And can I tell you, sometimes what's happening is we're not, we're not putting the yoke of God upon us, and God's trying to move us out, and sometimes he's prodding us. And, but, and, and you know, we're kicking against it. And, but it, there's coming a time, I, I, and I, I sense it in my spirit, amen, there's coming a time you can kick against the goad. You can kick against the word of God all you want to, but there's coming a time where the scales are going to fall off of your eyes and you're going to be, see, be able to see clearly and what God's going to do. Listen, if he did it for me, he can do it for you. Amen. He'll take those scales off of your eyes and you'll be able to see so clearly and you'll be able to see the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. And you know what? You'll get busy and you'll understand. I want to be under your supreme authority. It, listen, if you don't think this is important, then watch this. If you don't think it's, listen, when you think about disciples, tell, tell, me a, tell me a disciple you guys think about immediately. Who's the first disciple? Peter. Amen. Why? Peter was a, a, a he was out there, right? He's that radical guy. He, he's out there and says, you know what? I, I, 3,000 people, I, I'll preach it and 3,000 people would be saved. Somebody else. Who else, who else you think about? Who? John. Amen. John the beloved. John's one of those ones, amen, that he would lay in the bosom of the Lord. You, you know what I'm talking about. And then we think about the Apostle Paul, right? The Apostle Paul, he, he's the guy who writes two-thirds of the Scripture, right? In, 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 the, in the New Testament. But what about James? Most people don't talk about James. Amen. There's very little recorded in the New Testament about James. But watch this. At the Council of Nicaea, if you will, in Acts chapter 15, at the Council of Jerusalem, I'm sorry, James, the leader of the church, is in, in Jerusalem, led a meeting. He, keep, picture this mind, in mind. It's James is in charge of the church in Jerusalem, and they're in his house. They're, in, they're, they're under his, his covering. And, and they led a meeting with Paul, Barnabas, and Peter, and John, and all the rest of the apostles and the elders of the church of Jerusalem. And what they were there to discuss was whether or not Gentiles should be circumcised. Each one stood up and they talked about, picture the meeting if you will. They talked about the issue and then James stood up and he gave his decision. And so Peter spoke, Paul spoke, Barnabas spoke, John spoke. But, the, but then here comes James. James stood up. And he gave his decision, and according to the word of God, all of them, including Peter, Paul, and John, submitted to the decision of James. You know why? Because they understood the threshold covenant. They understood uh, being under authority. Here, listen, you don't believe me? Watch again. In Acts chapter 12 and verse 17, when the angel released Peter from prison, Peter said to the believers at the house of Mary, Go tell these things to James. Now, why would Peter, of all people, the Apostle Peter, why would he say, go tell these things to James? Why, why wouldn't the Apostle Peter say, you know what? I'm that guy who won 3,000 people to the Lord. Who's this James guy? Why should I have to submit to James? And so sometimes God is doing supernatural great things in our lives. And people know more about Juanita than they do about her pastor. But yet she says, you know what? I'm Juanita, but he's my pastor. And I'm going to be submissive to my pastor. And you know what? That's why it's so amazing. You have certain people in the church, when they're going to be out of town, you know what they'll do? They'll call the elder and say, you know what? I'm going to be out of town this week. You know what they've learned? They learn how to be under authority. Oh, Jesus, help us, Lord, get this if you don't mind. Say, come on, help me in this place. Hello? So why would Peter and Paul identify James in these two accounts? It's very clear because he was the lead man, and they understood spiritual authority. I, there's no way I'm going to be able to get everybody up here in the second service, but this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Listen, if you have an authority issues, maybe there's some people that have, 
have hurt you. Maybe maybe leadership has done some, some crazy things in your life and, and you've become um, apt to resist authority and apt to resist being submissive to God's sovereign authority. And, and maybe that's you this morning. I, I'm going to ask here in just a moment if you would come. But ultimately, the first thing we need to do is that we need to make sure that we are under the submissive authority of the supreme God of all the world, the creator and sustainer of all things. If you don't know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to invite you as these others come as well that you'd come to the altar and we would say a prayer with you that you'd give your life and your heart, your mind, your soul, everything to God. And you'd say, you know what? Your word is my measure. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. If you're having problems with authority right now, Maybe it's, it's, it's maybe it's, it's church related. Maybe it's, it's job related. Maybe it's home related. Maybe I, maybe, maybe it's government related. I, I don't know what it is, but you're having a problem with authority. I'm gonna ask you if you would make your way to the altar right now, or if you need to give your life to Christ, I'm gonna ask you if you will make your way to the altar right now. Say, I want to get this right today, right now, in the name of Jesus. I want to make it right. I want to make it right. So come towards the center if you don't mind. Just come towards the center. I'm having problems with authority. Somebody's done me wrong, and it's, it's, it's contaminated my view of authority. In the name of Jesus, just make your way. Come on. Do you need to give your life to Christ, or you need to rededicate your life to Christ? Just make your way with them, if you don't mind. Everybody else, that's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask if you would. I want to ask you if you begin to pray and to ask God, God, is there something that I am not submissive to in regards to authority that I need to be submissive to? Maybe there's something your, your boss has asked you to do and you're, you're just blatantly not doing it because you don't feel like you need to do it. Amen. It's not something that violates the laws of the land. It's not something that violates, the, violates Scripture. Amen. You, you just blatantly just are not doing it. I, maybe something in the church, maybe the pastor's a, a system or something that God's put in place and you're just saying, you know what, I don't have to do that. Well, you're out of the will of God. Hello? So, Father, right in this time, I want y'all to pray right now. Just everybody all over the place, say, examine your own heart and say, God, is there anything that, that I need to repent of in regards to authority in the name of Jesus?
just do. Let all the earth rejoice. All the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice. Trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing me how great is our God. Oh, see how great, how great is our God. Is our God. Amen. Can we give God praise in the house of the Lord? Listen, um, today ministry meeting today at uh, 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock, IP Cafe. Don't forget that. Also, don't forget if you order meals, please go by and pick up your meals. Also, this Wednesday night, everything's back to normal, if you will. So don't forget Wednesday night, midweek service, Bible study. All minds, hearts, and souls clear. Um, if you're our guest, we'd love to meet with you in the hospitality room. God bless you all. Shake hands. Be friendly. Come back. We'll see you Wednesday night. The Lord willing, the rapture doesn't take place. If it does, we'll see you on the other side.